All right. Good evening. Good evening, King Noel Church. How are y'all doing this evening? Good, good. Thumbs up. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to go tap in, go straight into prayer and then follow that up with Bible study. I know um, Pastor Rebecca has a dynamic word that she's <laughs> going to be sharing on this evening. That's going to be impactful to our souls and to our mind and to our hearts. So let's go in. Father God, we thank you. <clears throat> For this time, Lord God, we thank you for this time, Lord God, that we're able to come before your presence. We thank you, Lord God, that you're the great I am, Lord God, that you're the strong tower, Lord God, for us to lean on when times get rough, Lord God. Father God, I pray that right now, Lord God, that you lift the continents up, Lord God, of everybody that's participating, that's here on this call, Lord God, that's here on this Zoom, Lord God, that's anybody that wanted to be here that could not, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for touching them wherever they are, Lord God. Father God, I pray, I pray that you'll be the ram in the bush, Lord God, for every need that we meet, Lord God, every need that Every need, Lord God, that, that I pray that you meet it right now, Lord God, every financial need, every scholastic need, Lord God, every need on the job, every need in our company, Lord God, every need, Lord God, in our friendship circles, every need in our household, Lord God, every need in our family, Lord God. We pray that, Lord God, that you be the supplier, Lord God, for you're the great I am, and I know that you can do all things, Lord God. So, Father God, we're leaning on you, Lord God, that your promises are yes and amen, Lord God, so that we can have what you say that we can have when we can do what you say that we can do, Lord. God. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for equipping us, Lord God, for changing our minds, Lord God, about things, Lord God, that we cannot change, Lord God. Father God, I pray that we can rest in you, Lord God, when we may get discouraged, Lord God, but we can rejoice with you, Lord God, for the ways that you've blessed us, Lord God, for we can count all joy, Lord God, for everything that you've given us thus far, Lord God, that for the vehicles that you bless us with, for the roof over our head, Lord God, for the food that we're able to put in our mouth, Lord God, for the finances in our bank account, we simply say thank you, Lord God. We thank you for being a provider, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God for touching us, Lord God, Lord God, for keeping us straight, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for speaking to our hearts, Lord God, and giving us empowerment, Lord God, to change anything that we need to change, Lord God. Father God, I thank you for the sacrifice, the give and the take, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, of how you're blessing us to survive and to live, Lord God, by the things that we're giving up, Lord God, because we're choosing to have a life after you. We're choosing, Lord God, to operate and listen in obedience to you, Lord God. We're choosing, Lord God, for you to, to guide us, Lord God, be the lamp unto our feet, Lord God, for we may not know where we're going or what we're doing, Lord God, but we're simply trusting you, Lord God, because you order our steps, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're guiding us, Lord God, in life, Lord God, that we cannot fail or falter, Lord God, because we have your hand, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for just simply being you, Lord God. You're the great I am, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. God, for blessing us, Lord God, to, for being halves, Lord, for uh, the, our ability to have, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for removing those things from our life, Lord God, that no longer serve you good, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, that we're able to hear on tonight, Lord God, what you have for us, Lord God. We receive it wholeheartedly in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. <clears throat> amen. 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 Well, we're going to jump right into the word on this evening. Um, I was sitting here, Pastor Will and I were talking about um, just kind of what we were hearing God for, for the next series for the church and um, even the next thing that we wanted to actually teach. Because the thing that I love about Bible study, it's a time to where you can learn. It's also a time where you can even ask questions, um, but it allows us to grow in our faith and things that maybe we did not have an understanding in. I didn't have a full understanding. And so I love that about Bible study. And so tonight I'm going to be teaching on um, a word that's not extremely very popular, but it's, um, if I put a title to this, it's called a submitted life. Um, if you're taking notes, write down a submitted life. And so right as we are off the heel of Resurrection Sunday, <clears throat> so we're talking about submission. And Jesus is always our blueprint for how to live, how to face obstacles, how to overcome things, how to love, how to pray, how to worship, how to give. He is the ultimate example for our lives. And so, you know, it says that he came to earth and he died to set an example and to give us eternal life. He came for two reasons. One, to be the blueprint for our life and to save us from eternal damnation. And so... Turn quickly to Luke 22 and verse 42. Luke chapter 22 and verse 42. <clears throat> Luke 22, verse 42. It says, Father, 
If you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And so here it is. This is in Luke <clears throat> where Jesus is in the garden of consider me. And he's saying to the, to the, um, to the Lord, he's saying, Hey, Hey, Hey God, I don't want to do this thing that you want me to do. I don't want to die. I don't want to get up on this cross and give my life. Like if there's another option, can you take this big cup from me? Can you take this pain away from me? Can you take this assignment away from me? But then he says, but if not, if it's not your will, I'm not, not, do not allow my will, excuse me, but yours to be done. And that's what submission is. It's like, hey, even the things that we may face that could be complicated, that is uncomfortable, that is something we don't want to do. We want to make sure that our will will be what God's will is. Jesus asked for another option, but he submitted and said, God, let your will be done. And I really think most of us, we don't genuinely understand the whole concept and the meaning around the word submission. And so I want to share my own personal story around submission. Um, I believe before understanding what submission really is, that submission was weak. I really thought it was weak. And if you are grown up in a culture where it is a, a color, a culture that is um, of color, many times that is what's taught to us, that submission is weak. And if you are a woman, you probably have heard some of these lines before, which is what I got from my parents and my aunts. You better be a strong and independent woman. Anything that you put your mind to, you can do it, right? And so these aren't necessarily bad messages, but they don't follow the kingdom principle of living. And so if I put my mind to anything and I believe that I can do it, what I also left out was God's input. If I say I'm going to set my mind to do this and I'm going to do anything I want to do, but I didn't pray and I didn't submit that to the father, that's not a submitted life. Here I am all my life. You got to be this strong, independent woman, educated, go after everything that you need. But then when I got married, I struggled because now I got to be submitted to this man who the Bible tells me that the husband is the head of the family. But I'm used to being independent and strong and doing everything on my own. And so I struggled with how to live a submitted life and frowned at it. Um, I remember my first women's ministry meeting talking about submission and tried to make it sound cute. I literally said, well, he the head, but we the neck and we going to, you control the head. That is not the will of God. That is not what a submitted life is, right? The God has the blueprint is that he is the head. You are the wife. You are his rib. You are his support. And you all both need to be submitted to each other. And so submission doesn't have to be this word that we frowned upon or that it means that you have less of value or less importance. It just means that we have to give up our will for the will of God and the purpose of God. And if we're honest, there are things that we submit to on a day-to-day -day life that we don't even take a second thought to. When it comes to that red traffic light, I bet you're going to submit and hit them brakes for your safety and your protection. Hmm? And when, and when it comes to the doctor and there's a serious illness and they tell you, hey, this is a treatment plan, go take this medication, or hey, you got to get this shot, we submit and we do that because it's for our own benefit to feel better. Or if, you know, if you go to the dentist and you got to get a numbing shot in your tooth, right? For them to do the procedure, right? That's ahead of you. We open up our mouth very wide and we go right ahead and submit to that procedure. And so, and here's another thing that we submit to. We submit to the law of man and the land that we live in. Let's say nobody going to jail. I'm too cute to go to jail. Hallelujah. Although I have some debt, I'm not going to go rob this bank. Them student loans, these papers, they come in here every couple of days with these student loans. But I'm not going to go rob Chase because I love my freedom, right? So there are many reasons why we actively submit to others, mainly because of position that they may hold, are, but not because they're more important than we are. 
But what we do is we have to submit to the position and the authority to which they carry our job, our task that they have, a president, a CEO, a manager, a director, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, a pastor, a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, so forth. Not that they are more important to you, more superior than you, but is that they hold a position that we have to honor and be submitted to. Submissiveness has a place for every person here on the earth, from every man to every woman, to every boy, to every girl. I remember Kvela said to me, she said, I want to be an adult because I want to tell you what to do. Because I feel like kids and adults should have a tray places where uh, kids should have to listen to, and adults should have to listen to everything that the kids say. I said, oh, that's really cute. I said, but sweetheart, believe it or not, even as an adult, as mom and dad, there are people that we still have to listen to. There are people that we still have to be submitted to, rules that we have to follow. Age does not determine submission. Heart posture does. That's good. Okay. So it doesn't make, anybody more worthy than you are submission re does require you though to relent your own will in order for the well-being of order to take place because if there is not submission chaos will occur if we don't submit to the law of the land chaos will occur if we don't follow the laws we have to be submitted so you know i'm gonna talk back church so somebody gotta say i gotta be submitted I got to be. All prepared. right. Now, the Lord also knew some of y'all was going to be on here tonight because he didn't even allow me to study about submission as far as husband and wife. The first thing he told me to talk about is for the singles. He said submitting to God when you're single is the best and the, the best season of your life and is the blessed season of the life in which you're living. As a single Christian man or woman, and you're designed for, hey, I'm waiting on my Mr. Right. I'm waiting on my Mrs. Right. One thing is don't rush the process of that, because if you do that, you may run into Mr. Wrong and Mr. Just right now and not my right forever. Okay. So learning to submit your life to God right now as a single person helps you to have a happier marriage and a healthy marriage later on. God's timing is perfect and always on time. He doesn't make any mistakes. But here is the thing is we cannot get weary in the waiting. And so singles don't get weary in the waiting, stay submitted to God, trust him to direct your footpath and start preparing yourself by first being submitted to God in this season of your life. Because if you can submit to God, when a husband and a wife occur, you're going to know how to be submitted because you've already practiced that with the father. That's Amen. good. Amen. Right. So we have to make sure that we stay submitted. And so here is. I want to show you in the word what it says. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32. It says, in the NIV version, it says, an unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affair. But I like the New Living Translation better. It says, I want you to be free from the concerns of this life. An unmarried man our one man can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking how to please him. How come? Because right now you're not worried about taking care of anybody else. You're not worried about taking care of a family. Yes, you got other things and other responsibilities as a single person. But at this time, right now, my heart posture, my emotional intimacy should be only to the father right now. Submitting to God's will means waiting on him to open the right doors at the right time so you can get the right person. Mm. Rushing in to get married and choosing your own path mean you may choose the wrong person and you're going to be frustrated down the road. And I promise you, you hear Pastor Will and I say this all the time, the decision of who you marry is the most, it's one of the most important decisions of your life. It can change the trajectory of your life, who you say I do to. You have to guard this decision and submit it to the father so that you're with the right person, but that requires a life of submission. Okay. 
So singles, you got a wonderful opportunity now. Build your relationship with God and build that intimacy with him right now. Focusing on pleasing God right now. Submitting to his will right now. Submitting to his plan for your life right now. And trust that he will order your footsteps for the right timing. And that his promise of bringing you who he has for you will come. But you need to work on submission now so that it doesn't be hard when it's time for you to say I do, okay? So let's talk about the discipline of submission, the discipline of submission. So to be submitted, it means you have to voluntarily, nobody has a gun to your head, nobody has a knife to your neck, but this is a voluntary thing, right? Submitting means I lay down my will and submit to Christ and also to others who are in authority. We make a commitment to yield our will, our mind, our mind, our body for God's purposes so we can better hear, receive, and obey his word. So I have to be submitted to God and I also have to be submitted to the authority of who I have submitted to my pastor, my leaders, your boss, your, your parents, if you aren't married, if you're married, your spouse, so that I can hear, receive and obey his word. Now I'll say this quickly for our hus the husbands and the wives. When you aren't doing submission well, you don't allow for blessings to come in your household. Because he says, in unity, I command a blessing. So if you are you are not in unity, if there is not a, the right level of submission that's happening in the house, if you're a wife and you are operating as the head of the household, there is not unity because it's out of order for what God's blueprint is for what family is. And so you're blocking the favor and the blessings of the Lord. So we have to make sure that we are committing to being disciplined in our submission. It's a call to submit and a discipline because it takes our effort, even though we are not required to do it. So it means, hey, 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 hey. I got to put some effort and intentionality in it because my natural flesh don't do this on its own. I have to be intentional about doing it. When we are submitting to others, we are also submitting and serving Christ as the Lord and working willingly at whatever you do as though you're working for the Lord, not for people. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time because I need you all to understand me. that whatever you submit to for Christ, that you are doing it for him and not for people. So all of you that serve in kingdom will, you don't serve for Pastor Vivica or Pastor Will. You serve for God. So if Pastor Will or Pastor Vivica sneezed too hard or you thought we had said something you didn't like, you keep serving because it ain't for us. It's for him. And so Colossians chapter three and verse 24 says this. <laughs> Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord would give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is who? Christ. Not the person you submitted to, but you are serving Christ. And so it's not for <clears throat> your pastors. It is me submitting to my husband. I love him and I like to please him, but it ain't always just for him, but it's for, hey, this is my command by God. And so I want to do this because I want to be submitted to God and his will for my life. And so <clears throat> because submission is also as about respect, it is also not to exceed the parameters of the will of God, his love and his righteousness, because sometimes we can be submitted in places that isn't aligned to God, that people will misuse us and abuse us. Mm. Okay. And so you have to know about, hey, 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 let me check the parameter. Is this in the will of God? Does this line up with the word of God? Does this represent and looks like the love of Christ? Is this line up to the righteousness of God? Because if it's not, then that's just somebody just trying to be the master of your life. And he says, the master you serve is only him. Okay. But 
here is the thing that I liked about the end of Colossians 24 is that it's an inheritance. When you do this, there is an inheritance and a reward for it. When your husband and wife, when you're married and you do this, there's a reward of having a healthy and loving and kingdom representing marriage. When you do this as a single person, there is an inheritance as you praying for your person. Hey, hey, God, I'm submitted. I want my inheritance of my husband. I want my inheritance of my wife. It's a promise to you. And the thing about his promises, he always keeps them. He always keeps them. And so the application is actually for our benefit. He don't get any benefit of from it. We do. In our churches, we are under the leadership of those who are more knowledgeable than us and also people that respect other leadership because that's how we learn and we grow. So Pastor Will and I are big on this. We honor our leaders and those that cover us. We don't allow others around us to even dishonor them in our presence. You better not open up your mouth and say anything about Bishop Kate in my presence. No, you will not. You better not open up your mouth and say anything about Dr. Jackson in my presence. No, you will not. Because here is the thing. When we build and we are submitted and we have, we build these, these churches and we are submitted to leadership and we are submitted to someone, then you're submitted to someone. And then what happens is in your homes, there's the order of submission in your homes. And then we have what we say that we want to build in kingdom well, healthy family, healthy church, healthy family, healthy community, because we live a submitted life. It comes through submission. And so whenever we are submitting in respect and love, we create harmony, contentment, and commitment to what God has given us. Because the prim principle is what you sow, you will reap. What you give, you shall receive. That's the principle. Hey, if I will give submission and respect and honor, the principle is I'm going to get that back in return. So we have to make sure as kingdom citizens that we have to do this well because there's a reward for it. And so remember at the beginning, I said to you, I said, um, the reward for <clears throat> doing submission is that, well, I just said the, war, the reward for submission is well, but that I also said that it's important that we submit because it doesn't mean that a person is lesser than us or more important than us, but it's about the fact that they hold a certain position or authority or that they carry out a task or a job. We honor the position that they hold. So I want to tell you a quick story. I was on the phone with um, my mentor and she's really big on giving and receiving honor. Like she, she gives honor like this. She exudes it. And so she always receives it. And so she said, Vivica, let me tell you this quick story. She was telling me about somebody that had came up to her and called her by her first name and not by the position of who she was. And she said, and it just kind of took me by surprise. She said, can you imagine if you're submitted under the leadership of Bishop Jakes and you walk into the potter's house and you Bishop walks by you and you say, oh, hey, what's, hi, how you doing, um, Mr. Thomas Dexter? Don't that sound funny? Like we don't even say, usually people don't even know that that's what TD stands for, right? Um, hey, 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 Mr. Hey, Mr. Dexter. And so what happens is she told me, here's, here's the lesson in this. She said, even when you're submitted, what you call upon is what shows up in your life. If I call upon the man, then the man shows up. But if I'm in a spiritual context with him, I need the bishop to show up the position and the authority of what he's been called to in the house of God to show up for me. And so I thought about it. I said, hey, um, it corrected me because I noticed that month, sometimes when I visit Word of Faith, when I would see Bishop Kate, I would say, hey, daddy. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. But right now in the house of God, I don't need daddy to show up. I need bishop to show up because he may have a word for me, a word of wisdom, a prophetic word. So I have to even be careful when I'm submitted by what I call upon because that's what will show up. And so 
Um, submission is about being intentional about our reverence and about our interpersonal relationships because how we submit determine who shows up in our life. And so I was thinking about this and I said, God, if submission is about how we reverence you, then surrender is about how we should come before you. Good. And so I said, okay, Lord. And so the Lord said, so next Bible said, prepare yourself. We're going to talk about surrendering because submission is how we reverence, but surrender is about how we come before him. And so I, t I want to tell you what submission is not. Submission is not about your loss of identity or your personality. It's not about you being somebody different or you not being the authentic, of the authentic person that you are because God made you the way that he made you. There is only one person that's like you. He fearfully and wonderfully made you. He know every hair that is up on your head. He made you specifically for a purpose in the earth to bring a answer and a solution to. And so you don't lose that by submitting. Okay. We are free indeed because he died for us, okay? But submission is not, is not also about hating ourselves or respecting ourselves because you can't give something that you don't give to yourself first. I can't love you if I don't love me first. I have to even respect myself first before I can respect those that are in authority. And so I talk about it all the time. If I have an issue with respect over here at my mama's house, I have a whole I problem of respecting authority at somebody else's house. And so you can't give Baby. anything that you do not know how to do with you first. And so I told you, I struggled with this submission thing first. I had to lay Vivica on the altar for a minute. I did. Because even many times walking in different rooms, I was the leader in the room and the Lord had to teach me, okay, wait, 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 just because you're the loudest in the room don't mean you're the most wisest in the room. Sometimes you need to sit here and listen. Sometimes I want you to observe because I want you to pray and to assess a situation. And so we have to make sure that we lay ourselves down first so we can give this correctly. Does that make sense? So here is the thing. The Bible calls us to love ourselves because we can't do that unless we do it for, we can't do it for others unless we do it for ourselves first. Now, this don't mean that we be prideful, all right? And, you know, we got narcissistic tendencies or, you know, we, you know, thinking we the bum.com. And then listen, now you can be confident, but we don't want to be prideful, right? So Mark's, Mark chapter 12 is what I'm going to read. Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. And it says, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally as important. Love your neighbor as yourself no other commandment is greater than these so for me to love god with all my heart all my soul all my mind and all my strength i gotta be able to love somebody else like that too mm. he said because both of these are important we can't always be arrogant and putting our own self-interest and our own self-sufficiencies which can be necessary which can seem to be necessary and good. However, when we are self-sufficient or self-indulgent, we not only fail to see our need for redemption, but we also fail to see our need for growth in spiritual matters because everything comes about you. And I hate to tell you, everything cannot be about you. Therefore, self becomes God and any work of the true living God is either muted or put aside. 
you become God instead of God being God. And everything he wants becomes on the side, which means that we are not to base our identity on who we are in society, how much money we make, how good we look, how educated we are. But everything needs to be on who we are in Christ first. So Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6 says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend upon your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you the path to take. I pray this scripture almost every time I pray, God, that you will order the footsteps of the righteous man, that you will order us, God. Hey, 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 you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't, don't depend on your own understanding. <laughs> Because you know, some of your understanding got some of your, your grandma ways and mom on them ways and uncle and auntie them ways. And you know, they may be a little spicy. They may be a little arrogant. They may be a little rude. Don't trust in them. He said, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Trust in <clears throat> with me, the Lord, with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Seek my will. And I'm going to show you what path to take. Meekness causes us to seek to please God and submit our will and aspirations to his will and what is best. Not my own, not what I think is right. Not because I felt this particular way. Because what will happen is this will enable us to endure when we are personally attacked. When we are, un so we can keep our focus on God and our humility and our submission to him. When trials and stuff come up, when things may, when people may mistreat us, uh -uh, that's okay, God. I'm going to seek to your understanding about this. Because if I seek to mine, <laughs> if I seek to my own understanding, then that may, I may not respond correctly in that. But God, I got to seek to yours. Because here's the thing. Meekness is so important. Um, My mentor said, share this with me too. We were talking about how many times when we become arrogant and prideful, we take on the praise of people. You know, we get the compliments of people and we just, you know, oh, you sound so good. Oh my God, you did that so well. And we just like, oh yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And she said, whatever you eat going up, you gotta eat coming down. Cause see pride becomes before the fall, the fall going to come if you go up in pride. And so all them accolades and all that woohoo, ha ha ha, ask the athletes, they know about it. Everybody shoot hollering your name when the scoreboard is in winning and you're doing really well. But as soon as you lose though, oh, they terrible. Oh, I bet not see them. I was so mad with the LSU basketball player when the other night and that girl was seeming like she was helping her friend and not playing for LSU. See, all that stuff. You got to eat coming back down. And so we got to work at being humble. We got to work at being submitted because the gifts that we have when you're in the king, they're not really yours. It's what God gives you so that you can give him praise. It's what he gives you so you can be a solution within the earth. It's what he gives you for purpose, for his plan, not yours. And so what happens when we don't really do submission well, when we're not disciplined enough to do submission well? If we do not submit, we cause for chaos to really happen because we don't allow for unity to happen. We disregard unity. We disregard respect for authority. And what happens is that the sin for nature of ourselves, it wins. And then we have in crawls because we got pride. We battling one another because instead of the love of, of, of loving each other and forgiving each other, we in strife. And then it brings about destruction in our churches, in our families, in our relationship, because we become imprisoned in our own agendas and hurts that the relationship and the sweetness of who God is, it doesn't happen. And we just forsake his work. We get consumed in our own emotions and how we feel and what we upset about that we lose the focus of the will of God to happen. 
and then it caused chaos to happen. So kingdom well and those that are on, we have to live a submitted life so that the plan of God can go forth. Because when we're not submitted, chaos will occur, division will occur, and then God's work doesn't be done. And it will not happen in this house. Your leaders will be submitted and we will require you to be submitted so that we can do the will of God. Amen. 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 I hope that was good. You know, I got to study. And so listen, submitted life. And now we're going to do a surrendered life on Bible study for next month. Listen, I, this stretch your pastor. I had to really assess some things and say, Hey God, where can I do this submission better? God, where can I watch what I say? Am I really being as respectful as I can to those that have ruling authority over me? God, I want to do this the right way. Um, and so I hope this challenged you on tonight and it blessed you on tonight. Let's pray. Father, God, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you, God, for this, your word that's gone forth on tonight, Father, that you have called us and required of us, God, to live a submitted life unto you. God, let us submit, God, to your will and to your understanding, Lord. God, allow us, Lord God, to be submitted that you will order the footsteps of our lives, God. That, God, that when we have a question about things, Lord God, that we will come to you with it. God, we will go to those that we've been su submitted to, God, for direction, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that on today that we will allow this word to take seed in our heart, Father, that it will, Father, the grow God and it will um, take fruit, God, and God, that we would apply it. God, we thank you, Lord God, that we want to get it right. God, teach us, God, God, that the ways that maybe we haven't been submitted before, that God, that you will show us how to be submitted. Those that are here that are single, God, that they will be submitted to you, Lord God, and put you first, God, until you send the person that's for them. God, as every husband and every wife that's represented, God, that you would teach us, God, how to submit to one another, and God, that we will honor and respect respect the order of family that you have, Father God, for the blueprint of our families, God. Help us, God, to get this right, that God, that our churches will, our church, our, this ministry, Kingdom Well, and even other ministries in this city, God, will be healthy, God, that our community will be healthy, God. We want to have a healthy families and a healthy church and a healthy community, God. That is what you've called us to do. So God, we submit to this word on tonight to do the work that we need to do to be better, Represents for you here in the earth realm. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Ooh, that was something. That was something. That was a that was an on-time word. Um submission definitely goes up and down, but it also goes up and down from leader to whoever you're listening to, but it also goes sideways to your friends you should submit yourself one to another so the, you know, everybody knows the golden rule do unto others as you would have them do unto you so that same kind of honor and respect and love should go person to person who you're equal with as well if you don't want the people to talk about you don't talk about them the same thing vice versa if you don't want them to do that to you don't do that to them that same honor and that level of submission goes sideways as well um so Thank you, Pastor Mirk, for your study, for your pour. I'm looking forward to the next Bible study on surrendering. Uh, but now at this time, we'll have opportunity for you to submit through your finances. If, you, if you're choosing to give tonight, if you desire to give, if God has prompted to, prompted your heart to sow, um, we don't want to go come before the king without a gift. Or if with that word was impactful to you and it meant something to you, you have an opportunity to put a seed on it so that it can grow and harvest in your life. So um, the ways to give is kingdomwellbr at gmail.com if you're giving by Zell or uh, kingdomwellbr with the cash if you want to give by cash app or if you already have the Givelify app, you can use that app. Um, but it's critical to sow on words that you receive that are impactful to you because you want to feel the fruit of that growth. Um, so at this time, I'll give you 10 seconds. If God is telling you to give, then you'll give.
All right, let's pray for your seeds. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for every seed that has been sown, Lord God. We thank you for those that have chosen to give, those that desire to give and have not, Lord God. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that it will reap forth a harvest, Lord God. We're planting a seed on that word, Lord God, so that it'll resonate and grow within our spirit, Lord God. We thank you for multiplication over our finances, Lord God, multiplication over our desires that will be fulfilled by you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for, for learning about submission in a different way on a different level, Lord God, so that we can make it applicable to our daily lives, Lord God. We thank you for just being willing, Lord God, to speak to us, Lord God, so that we may grow in stature and grow in our spiritual presence, Lord God, and know how to properly submit to you, Lord God, because we want to give you our will, Lord God. We want to give and lean into your way, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, for that ability, Lord God, that you've chosen us, Lord God, to submit to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Well, I have no other announcements amen. other than to see you on this upcoming Sunday, two o'clock, Kingdom Well Church, 136 South Acadian. I'm looking forward to meeting you there. Be there or be square. Make sure that you invite somebody to church. I love this message. This message was so good tonight. I'm going to try to post it tonight. So be make sure that you share it with others who you feel could learn from this. Amen. 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 And if you're not subscribed to the YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get the notification that <laughs> it has been uploaded. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining. Good night. Get through Disney, Luke. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ingrid. <laughs>